Glenn Providence is owner and publisher of the Midtown Press. He's joining me to talk about the role this local paper serves in the Pine Hills and neighboring communities. Thanks so much for being here. Tell me a little bit about yourself and the press. Uh, thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, the Midtown Press, uh, formerly the Pine Hills Press, uh, has been a community-based uh, local newspaper serving the Pine Hills neighborhood since 1995. So it's been uh, continually, continuously in operation since then. And uh, the purpose of the paper is really telling the good about um, Pine Hills and the neighborhood uh, surrounding uh, the, the Pine Hills uh, community. There's so much negativity and negative stereotypes um, associated with Pine Hills. Um, you may have heard people refer to it as crime hills, but there's a lot of good, a lot of good people and a lot of positive uh, things happening in the Pine Hills and surrounding neighborhoods. So that's the goal of the paper. What was the initial drive for the paper? So it's kind of interesting. It's a little bit of a story behind it because I had nothing to do with um, the start of the paper. Um, the former owner, Noel and Bertie, Tina Bush that uh, started, again, the predecessor, the Pine Hills Press, um, started it to, again, have that voice in Pine Hills to educate the community about things going on here in government, um, uh, uh, neighborhood events, and, and people uh, in the community. And I came on board a couple years ago um, to really help kind of advance and take it to the next level, help create an online presence for the paper, and just to kind of help um, kind of inject some some new ideas and thoughts into it and that conversation kind of pivoted to hey you know what we're thinking about retiring would you want to take the paper over and never in a million years did I had any thoughts or ideas about um, doing the paper but interestingly enough um, I had a background in doing this I have uh, my bachelor's degrees in communication and I had done layout and design and, and that kind of work um, previously, um, but it was just kind of sitting there in the background waiting to be reactivated. Um, so it was just a matter of kind of putting that hat on and, and getting busy. So I've been doing this. I purchased the, I was able to purchase the paper from um, the Bushes in January of uh, 2021, um, and I've been at it ever since. What two needs are met through the publishing of the paper? So first and foremost, it's it's the community. I believe that there are so many stories, so many good people, and just a, a, a like a movement to kind of re-energize um, Pine Hills. There's so many projects um, and opportunities happening in the, in the neighborhood that being able to kind of laser focus in on those people on those stories, on those initiatives that are happening in the area. Um, it, it, I, I just think it, it needs to happen. I guess I'm kind of old school in that perspective. I, I actually have a, a technology background, but there is nothing like having a paper in your hand. So um, we print about 2,000 copies of the paper and uh, we distribute it online to about 5,000 um, people. But what is interesting is the, just still that desire to have that laser focus on a neighborhood, on a community. Things can get to be big, and we talk about national news and state news, but to be able to laser focus in on, on a community and to see people that you may know in the paper and your neighbor or, or an event that you attended, I think people still have a love for that. So the community um, is, is, is the biggest thing, and just as an offshoot um, of that community, just being able to kind of change the narrative about um, about that community. Um, Pine Hills, um, as you may or may not be aware of, was really the first community as Orlando was growing, the first suburb of, of, of Orlando. Um, and it's a beautiful, diverse neighborhood with lots of resources and lots of, of great people. So um, that's what the, the paper does. What types of news and information can people expect to find in the paper? Anything. Um, and that's the beauty about um, publishing this paper is I can be as creative as can be. A couple issues ago, I did a, um, I call it the Midtown Trivia. And um, for two issues, I did little known facts 
about Pine Hills, including like the year was founded and the size and how many people live in Pine Hills, just to give people um, just and, and more insight into the neighborhood. Um, I've done back to school um, specials where I have actually did um, photo shoots with, you know, uh, students modeling their back to school um, fashion. It was fun. the last issue was I did a Father's Day spread and I had fathers and their kids uh, for a photo shoot in a park um, and highlighting them. So it, it it's as creative as can be. Um, I'm working. I can't tell you yet because it's a little bit of a secret, but I'm working on my next issue. Um, it's probably going to be it's going to take a lot of work, but I think it's going to be uh, my biggest issue yet. But I'm really excited about what that's going to do. So it's that creativity that kind of drives it. And um, and so you can expect to see um, anything. I don't want it to become stale. And because of that, I'm always looking to introduce new different features. I'm looking forward to having a section about the arts and entertainment um, in the area. So I'm working with a, um, a local arts advocate to have a feature column um, in the paper. I'm gonna have something about more youth sports. Um, um, I have a son who I just took to college um, and he's playing football and um, just that journey. So I'm having uh, another column about youth sports and the importance about grades and nutrition. Uh, another hat that, that I wear, as you uh, are aware of, is I, I, I'm the executive director of a nonprofit nutrition agency. So always including um, a, a, a healthy article and a, a recipe in there. So it's, it's diverse. And so you can expect to see, don't expect to see the same thing every issue. Does anyone else support you on your paper? So right now, it is, um, I, I do the layout design. I even deliver the paper um, myself. But that's just, and I, that's the, the, the symptoms, and I, and I call it the blessings of, of being a small business operator. Um, so as I'm looking to grow. Um, what I do um, uh, would like to say is really the support of um, the people who advertise in the paper. I have some loyal advertisers. It's a free paper, um, but it is done through advertising. So I have some long-term advertisers and I'm always looking for new advertisers. Um, so that support means the world to me when I get those phone calls um, from people who um, have gotten a copy of the paper, they enjoy the paper, they like the format and the message of the paper and they wanna associate their business or organization um, with the paper. So that's the kind of support that that, that I love and, and that I get from, from the paper. Why do you feel it's important for there to be local neighborhood papers? Local is where it is. Local really is where it is. You know, if you think back to the history of, of, of journalism and newspaper, it really started local. Um, they were all neighborhood. If you look back at the names, they, they all had names of of cities and towns, and and that's kind of where um, it started. And as 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 technology um, improved and got more accessible, we have cable and the internet and things like that. Local seemed to kind of lose its focus, but um, in 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 just like with the Midtown Press and for the thousands of other local um, community papers across the country, um, there is no substitute for local media. And even to despite the the advent of, of the internet, um, local papers, included the Midtown Press, have just ad adopted um, new technology, new strategies. So the, the paper copy, the physical copy um, on the website, we have a mirror um, digital copy that you can flip through and, and look through it. Um, and and it, it's a accurate representation of the physical paper. So it's like having it um, in your hands, but there is nothing like going to, um, I distribute it to libraries and schools and things like that. And the feeling and the reaction that I get, I'm the paper guy now, I feel like I have a paper route, um, which is ironic because I had one as a kid. Um, so going into these places and just seeing people's faces light up because they know, oh, we, the next issue is here and they get excited, they want to have it and I'll get um, uh, reactions. Hey, um, we have this going on at the school. We have this going on in the community. Can you cover it? Can you send someone to take pictures? And that's how I know that the paper is working and people really want this paper. So, yeah. Mm-hmm.
Mm -hmm. Are there other ways the community can help support? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a one man show right now. Um, so, uh, every, the issue, the paper comes out uh, six times a year, um, it's six issues a year and about three, four weeks before, um, the issue is done, I kind of go through this brainstorm session about what's happening and, and what's upcoming, um, what may have just occurred in the past that I got, um, that I have pictures or stories about, but, um, I can't be everywhere, um, at every time, um, at all times. So I want to know what else is going on. So people can email me. Um, it's Glenn with one N at the midtown press.com or go to the website, um, the midtown press.com and let me know what's going on, um, in, in the neighborhood. Let me know, um, of cleanup events, of, of grand openings of different businesses, um, that, uh, may be looking to get a spotlight and, um, just people. Um, again, I just believe that everyone has a story. There's a story in just about everything. And that's what I want to be able to convey in the paper. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Just get in touch um, um, with me. Um, I'm always looking for um, places to distribute the paper. Um, so even if there is no stories, I want the paper to go out to as many um, different drop points as, as possible. So if you're looking for um, copies of the paper, get in touch with me. Again, um, the stories, of course, I'd be remiss if you're looking for advertising opportunities. There is nothing better than, than local advertising. And even if it's not my paper, um, there are other incredible local uh, papers that around support local media. Um, these are small and mom and pop businesses. Um, sometimes people think of a, 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 a small mom and pop grocery store or or, or whatever, but these are small businesses that support families and, and money is kind of recycled um, locally. So support local media. How can people stay in touch and learn more? Yeah, so um, definitely I want to hear um, from people. So um, there is a comment page um, on the website, themidtownpress.com. Um, definitely, I want to know of more events if there's pictures and, and stories. And I'm interested if, um, you know, part of that creativity, like I mentioned before, there may be an idea that I may not have thought of that may um, reflect incredibly in, in the paper. Um, so if there's ideas and suggestions that people have, I want to know um, what those are. This paper is supposed to be about the people. And so if people have ideas and suggestions, um, um, there is nothing off the table. There isn't anything I wouldn't consider. Um, but I just want to, just as long as it continues to kind of hone in on telling those positive stories and sharing that good news about events happening in the neighborhood, let me know. Um, that's 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 the goal and the purpose of the paper. Well, thank you so much. I thank really you appreciate you being me. here for, for sharing the news with everybody. Thank you. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you for having me. If you're enjoying this show, please subscribe to our channel and follow our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts.